Welcome to ADB Insight. I'm Jam Kaiko. Climate change is the critical issue of our lifetime, and that's especially true here in Asia and the Pacific. Over the past 12 months, we've seen devastating hurricanes, droughts, floods, and sea level rises. And these impacts will only increase in frequency and intensity. Massive investment is needed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and build resilience. A new program by the Asian Development Bank is aiming to help. It's called the Innovative Finance Facility for Climate in Asia and the Pacific, or IFCAP. It's a program never before attempted by a multilateral development bank and could accelerate billions in much-needed climate investment. Here to tell us more about IFCAP is Warren Evans, ADB's Climate Envoy. Warren, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jim. It's great to be here with you. So first, tell us about IFCAP and how it works. The IFCAP, or the Innovative Finance Facility for Climate in Asia and Pacific, is a very new way of mobilizing climate finance for investing in our developing member countries. It's really a very interesting approach to using guarantees from donor governments and potentially from philanthropies to carve out a part of our existing sovereign portfolio, so loans that are already on our books, it'll carve out part of those sovereign loans, take them off our books, and that frees up capital for us to be able to invest in new climate, investment, uh, climate projects. What makes IFCAP so innovative? This is the first time, to our knowledge, that any MDB has used this approach, whereby guarantees allow us to carve out part of our sovereign portfolio. So what happens is, Basically, a guarantee, let's say, of a billion dollars will allow us to free up about five billion, four to five billion dollars of climate finance for new projects. And, and the, this is the first time that climate finance is being leveraged in this way. So normally, climate finance means a dollar in to a, a GCF or a climate investment fund or some similar facility results in a dollar out. But for us, what we're getting is a dollar in and four or five dollars out. And another part of this that's very interesting is that because this is part of our sovereign portfolio, we have a very good track record, almost no defaults on our, on our sovereign lending. And so the likelihood is that the donor that puts in a dollar will get that dollar back. What was the spark that led to its creation? Well, there, there were actually probably three sparks. First off was prior to the 2021 Glasgow COP, COP26, a number of, of our shareholders were pushing the MDB community to come up with new ways, innovative ways of mobilizing climate finance. So that was number one. In response to that, our president, President Massa, at the COP actually increased our ambition for climate finance from a commitment of $80 billion from 2019 to 2030 to $100 billion. Now that's $20 billion difference and we needed to come up with a way to mobilize climate finance to increase our headroom to provide climate finance for our developing member countries. So that was the, the first big spark. Second was the G20 CAF review, the capital adequacy framework that was proposed by the G20 last year. Now that we felt required us to think differently about how we mobilize resources. And IFCAP is very, very consistent with the recommendations that they came up with. So we felt like it put us a step ahead in that regard. Finally, I think in general, the recognition that our developing member countries are feeling the results of increased frequency and intensity of climate events mandates us to come up with additional funding to help them to deal with, to build resilience to those kinds of climate events. So those were the sparks that, that led to IFCAP. So who's going to benefit from IFCAP? Where will the additional climate financing created by IFCAP go? The climate finance mobilized through IFCAP will be similar to our ordinary capital resources, so our OCR. That means it's not super soft. It's more concessional, obviously, than commercial finance, but it's not grant or highly concessional finance. So IFCAP will essentially free up, we hope, 
in the range of 10 to 20 billion dollars over the next two to three years for a five-year program for mitigation projects and adaptation projects in all of our DMCs that meet the criteria for OCR. We hope that we will also be able to access concessional finance and grant finance to actually soften some of the investments. So for example, in the Pacific member countries, in some of the poorer, more vulnerable countries, we need to find a level of concessionality to help offset some of the costs of those investments. But IFCAP basically will be for normal ADB finance projects in accordance with our climate action plan. And finally, if you look at the bigger picture, what is the true potential for IFCAP in Asia and the Pacific and maybe even beyond? Could this be a new way of doing business for multilateral development banks? One of the reasons that we are the Climate Bank for Asia and Pacific is because we have the opportunity to dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions across the region in part as a global public good, but also in many of our countries, it's simply to improve energy independence in those countries and to improve in many countries in air quality in cities. So the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions is, is a part of the story. But the other part of the story is that, that many of the people in Asia and Pacific are the most vulnerable to climate impacts. So the floods that we saw in Pakistan last year, the droughts uh, in several countries, such as in China, the tropical cyclones that hit the Pacific. The vulnerable communities to these climate impacts need support to build climate resilience. And so that's our focus in ADB. And that's why we are the climate bank. We have to focus on climate to achieve sustainable development across the region. IFCAP is a remarkable approach to increasing the amount of money that is ring-fenced for climate action by ADB. I, th I think this is an exciting new way of doing business on how we mobilize resources. Uh, fortunately, we were, we were able to interest several donor governments, shareholders of ADB, and some philanthropies in working with us to come up with the concept, to develop the concept in detail. We've engaged with a number of developing member countries to understand how this can support their actions on the ground at the country level. So this is very much a partnership approach to innovation. This approach could very well be used by other multilateral development banks. We think it could even be adapted for other special purposes where we have a, a real challenge like climate change, uh, a pandemic, for example, uh, in, in a situation where we need to mobilize money targeted for a particular issue, then this is a good approach, potential approach, as opposed to a general capital increase. Warren, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jam. It was great talking to you today. And thank you to everyone for joining us for this episode of ADB Insight. I'm Jam Kaiko. Until next time, goodbye.